Hello and welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We have Craig Burley here, Stuart Robson and Don Hutchison as well. And we have a repeat question from yesterday, which was a good one. What was so it? So get ready, guys. Okay. It's uh, the penultimate question today and it's right. on the well, way. Give us time to think about it, even though we don't know what the question is. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those that you have to hear and then decide when you hear it. All right. Uh, Don, first question. What's the percentage chance of Liverpool winning a treble? Twenty percent. That's that's not bad percentage, is it? Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm getting I'm not, better at I'm, this, you know. I'm not venturing <laughs> above. Well, no, because you haven't put the second part to it. I'm not venturing above <laughs> ten. <laughs> Maybe five. Right. Oh, we'll five. Ten yeah. percent. No, ten percent chance. I mean, it's, it's, it's oh, slim. Slim, I'd say. Slim. Is that all right for you, percentage king, Don? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I've, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll knock it down five. I'll knock it down to 15. Meet in the middle between me and Craig. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rob, I'll start with you for this one. For the lads. I get paper. I don't know. I don't know why you get paper. It, it's a waste of time and a waste of paper. Uh, Robbo, for the lads, start one, bench one, sit one. These iconic caretaker coaches, Roy Hodgson, Sam Allardyce and Tony Pulis. And what have I got to do with them? You've got to start one, so you've got to use one. You've got to have one as your backup, and you've got to say, no, I don't want that one. OK, I'm going to go Roy Hodgson that I would uh, start with. My backup would be Tony Pulis, and Sam Allardyce would be nowhere near my club. Thank you very much. Uh, no love for Big Sam, Don. What about you? No, I am, I am concurring 100% with Robbo. <laughs> Craig? Mm. I'm definitely Roy Hodgson, yeah. Well, managing where he's managed international football and club football. I don't know, I mean, people forget when what Sam Allardyce did at Bolton. It was amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going Sam Allardyce. All right. And Tony Poulos. Well, I, like, I don't mind either of them. All right. Um, which team had the worst fans? Do you have any stories, Craig? Uh... The worst as in... Well, you can you can define that. Maybe the scariest, maybe the ones that were the, the Well, meanest. Millwall would be a little scary. Yep. Uh, West Ham. The players don't really get scared. Some do, I suppose. Uh, no, I... I don't think... Maybe, maybe 30, 40 years ago, when things were a little different. But I don't think players... No, they don't, you don't really get... doesn't come into the equation. That makes sense. Yeah, you weren't scared of anyone, basically. No, I mean, some are just more vocal or abusive than others. Or violent. <laughs> some of them. Rumbo is smirking. I'm not sure why. Uh, Pat supporters, I mean, uh, when I was playing at Arsenal and to a certain degree West Ham, the Tottenham fans, particularly when I was at Arsenal, hated me because I'd been sent off against them in a, when I was 18 in a, in a Boxing Day game and I became public enemy number one. So going there was always a little bit difficult as I was getting off the coach and getting back onto the coach. But in the main, you didn't have too many problems with supporters. The only time I did have a real problem was when we were doing the Champions League game for ESPN and when Tottenham were playing Liverpool. And as I was walking to the ground, a whole of Liverpool supporters tried to grab hold of a badge and take it off me and get themselves into the ground, which wasn't very pleasant. Oh no, I'm sure it wasn't. Well, it's, funny, it's funny that, but I also have had more problems since I stopped playing than I played. Yeah. I wonder why. I've had, well, that's not problems. I don't see it as a problem. And Derek Ray saw this as a problem when they were trying to climb on the gantry and attack me during a live commentary. And uh, Derek <laughs> thought he was going to get pulverised and was calling for uh, backup to the director for. <laughs> We laugh about it now. It's a pity uh, they I'm... failed, Craig. Well, <laughs> they did fail, but I can tell you, Robbo, there was a few heads very close to my monitor on the gantry mm. <laughs> that when I was watching replay. <laughs> but yeah, you know, walking to games, you know, walking to stuff. You know, I think I've had more abuse that way than when I was playing. 
Because you're in amongst it then, seeing then you're having to go up stands to gantries and you've said something probably that hasn't gone down well. Because, in your case, probably. Well, because they only want to hear their story, every team, don't they? You're, I mean, we're all biased against, as I always say, we're always biased against your team. Because it's your team, you support one team. We look at all the teams, so people, I mean, Kate, to the day we, we Kate, to the, Go on, Robbo. Sorry, Craig, I was going to say, Kate, for, for Don, the fans were frightened of Don with his dis disciplinary record. The amount of times he was sent off, the fans were <laughs> oh, frightened mate. of Don, not the other way around. Honestly, honestly, Kay, I've played, I've played for 10 clubs and I knock it down to nine every single time because one of them will never, ever count that I played for them. And I hated them and they hated me like you wouldn't believe, and that was Millwall. I made the most ridiculous move of my life leaving West Ham when my boy was about five and I made a sort of selfish move that I didn't want to be too away from my boy. I didn't want to move far away. I could have went to the MLS, could have went to <laughs> could have went to Australia and I left West Ham to go to Millwall. And let me tell you, I got battered every single day from the Millwall fans. I remember one day... Did you not do your... Den, Don, did you not do your homework? Don, did you yes, not do your homework? Was, Everybody no, that went Robbo, from West Ham to Millwall Robbo, I, got abused. No, but Robbo... But Robbo, my boy was five. I didn't want to be too far away from him. So even though I'm saying selfish, I was looking after my lad because I wanted to be close to him. So Millwall was the team that come in for me. Could have went to America, could have went to Australia, went to Millwall. And I remember scoring at the new den and there was about 15, and the lads will know Craig, uh, sorry, Kay, right outside of the new den, the reception where you walk in is the player's car park. And about 15 fans were standing by my car massive like having a go at me like with expletives like you wouldn't believe and i was in panic mode i thought i need to get out of here this is ridiculous what, what so did literally, you do so wrong it was just I played for west ham that's it <laughs> and i literally got sent to coventry i phoned my mate who was adrian Heath, who was at coventry and i went in she get me away from here and he took me up to coventry he didn't quite wear the pros and cons, the pros and cons of that one, Don lad. You never. No, it's uh, but isn't it? No one likes us. We don't care. It sounds like you do care a little bit, Don. No, I do care because like, <laughs> what, what, see, what I couldn't get me head round, Kate. I, I understand the rivalry between Millwall and West Ham or West Ham and Tottenham, Newcastle, Sunderland, Rangers, Celtic. I get, I get all that. But what I couldn't grasp was when I was pulling a Millwall jersey on and scoring. They still hated me. Like, that, that's why I'm asking, what did you do no, so wrong? Could you not me. convince them and change no, their minds? No, because they're oh. so set in their ways. It's anything between the two clubs. It will never, ever, nothing will ever appease Millwall fans. I think the, next I think the first one, Don, the first one who did it was Paul Goddard, went from West Ham, I think, to Millwall for 800,000. Or he might have gone to Newcastle and then went to Millwall. As he got out yeah. the car on the very first day he was there, the new big signing, the same people that were probably round your car got round his yeah. car and in so many words said, we don't want you here, don't even try yeah. and play for us for, many, for, for too many, to, for too many years. Crazy. You won't be here very long and I think he lasted crazy. about six weeks. At least, yeah. you, at, least, at least you were allowed in the club car park, Don, to be abused. <laughs> at, at, at the end at Derby, I wasn't even allowed in the club car park. I was having a run in with the manager. I was told to go and park a mile away from the ground, so I was, you know, some, not even allowed in. I would have taken some abuse for a bit of a for a hundred yard walk, <laughs> rather than a one mile walk in the in the rain. I oh, know. I feel I feel that Don's scarred by that that um that experience. Yeah, just a little uh, bit. Next question for you, Robbo. The Chelsea board expect Christensen to move to Barcelona in the summer. What do you think he could bring to this Barcelona squad? Uh, well, he's a, a composed player. He's done quite well in recent times for Chelsea, playing on the right-hand side of a back three in, in the main. Uh, he's quite good in the air. He reads danger. He's comfortable on the ball. Is he better than Araujo? At, at the moment, he probably is, but Araujo is getting better and better. Um, yeah, he's, he could uh, do, a, do a lot for them, I think. Uh, it'd be a good signing for, for Barcelona. So here is the question that the guys got yesterday. You built this up, you know. Yeah. Same question to you guys from yesterday. I'm starting with you, Craig. Which would you pick? To, which team to be a part of? You're part of the team. 
Oh, I think I saw some of it. Yeah, Leicester's title win in 2016, Liverpool's comeback in the 2005 Champions League final, Aguero's last-minute goal against QPR, or Solskjaer's winner in 99 to clinch the treble for Manchester United. Quite What's easy a question? No, it's mm. quite easy for me. Uh, Man United. Why? Well, because it's the season, it's, it defines the whole season. Goals right at the end, they lift the creme de la creme of European football and have pl pretty much mopped up domestically. So, as good as all the rest of them were, that, that was... No, I, I don't think... That's not difficult for me, that. What would you go for, Robbo? Um, I would go with Craig, absolutely. But I would say for the players that uh, didn't have quite so much ambition, were slightly lesser players on lesser money, the Leicester story was great because when they started that season, they were favourites to be relegated. Ranieri had come in and that must have been a great team spirit. And from that, most of those players went on to do much better. Think of the likes of Mares and Conte. So, yeah, it would have been great to be part of that Leicester team. But see, that's a, that's a different, before Don says, but that's a different context. What's a bigger story? Because Leicester was our, probably the biggest story. No, but you get to be, because it, it may be on yesterday with more, you get to be on the team. Well, I'd want to be part of that Man United right. team. Because it was a brilliant team and, it, it, as I say, it mopped up. OK, it was outplayed by Bayern Munich in the final, but score line's a score line. But there's a story in as where you want to be as a player. And I think, well, I would have wanted to be Man United that season. All of them are yeah, yeah, where absolutely. were you when moments. Don, nobody <laughs> went for Liverpool tonight. Nobody went for Liverpool yesterday. We didn't have Stevie Nicol on here. Who would you go for? See, if you're Aguero, you want to be Aguero, didn't you? You want to be the man that's immortal, I've done that, which will never, ever happen again. But for us, I'd love to say Liverpool because that was one of the most iconic Champions League finals ever. But Craig's right, when you're when you're asked that question there and you bolt on the treble, that's it, isn't it? That's pinnacle stuff. Winning the treble, Champions League. It's got to be United, it's got to be it's got to be in that United side, it has to be. There's an anti-Liverpool bias in the show now. Is it switched from Man United? Who was on yesterday? Shaka? Yesterday was Shaka, Ale, and who else was on uh, extra time with us? What'd they say? I can't even remember what I had for dinner. Um, <laughs> what did they say? One went for Aguero, Ali went for Leicester, Shaka went for Manchester United, nobody went for Liverpool. No. Yeah. No. So. Aguero was special. Anti a Liverpool. Anti Liverpool, that's what we are. Anti yeah, Liverpool. Like Liverpool. Nick, all right, get Nickel on the phone. We need Nickel. Yeah. Come on the blow on that. Stevie will definitely go Liverpool. Yeah, well, he's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's absolutely no way he's picking any of the others. He's definitely not going Man United. Oh my no, God. Not a chance. 100%. 100%. No chance. You're not doing that. Absolutely no way. All right. Well, done. Um, not a question for the guys. Oh, good. Well, it is actually you for not you. Not a question for the guys. <laughs> well, it says just wondering on behalf of someone if there's an update on the status of the ESPN gym. Open? Still closed? Oh, still closed. I went mm. in the other day. No, well, I didn't go in it. Uh, I went in the initial door, which opened with my security pass, and the second one, I had a bash at it. Lights were out, all the equipment there, and that's still closed. Protocol, can't do anything about it. Way above our, so way above our pay grade, making those decisions. But clearly, yeah, it's still closed, so. Um, have you guys ever seen Craig Burley in a gym, Robbo or Don? No. Uh, no, I've seen him in a Turkish bath, which was a, a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Over in uh, in Berlin, if you remember, Craig, that was uh, that was an interesting trip. Mm. And I can tell you, he hadn't been to the gym at that point. And, oh, and that was that was before I had I started here, and I was bashing away at this gym at work. It's a brilliant gym, and uh, it's free uh, as well, I, I believe. <laughs> and uh, God, I was in the zone. So yeah, I was. But I do, you know, Robo does this roar machine as well. One of my things is roar machine, marvelous. Yeah, well, I, I, in shape. I have heard. Who suggested the heard. Turkish bath then? Who suggested what? that? Was that Craig or Robbo's idea? No, no, no. This was part of a piece that had to be done. Don't go too deep into it, Don. It was part <laughs> of a piece, and that was it was filmed. There was a camera crew in there. Trust me, you don't want to know. Okay. Now I've just heard that you really go 
All guns blazing when you're in the gym. I do. And when you're in that ESPN gym. I'm okay, I, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to back Craig up here. Uh, when he was uh, injured, and I, we went to the same physio, uh, Craig was fit. He did uh, some great times on the rower. He was fully fit, fully motivated. He looked a million dollars at the time and fully fit. There we go. Unlike, unlike now. The rowing machine, man, I tell you, I, could buy, I used to bash it out. I used to bet the players rehabbing and stuff to beat me. Not that some could beat me, but it's like, you know, doing all these ergo tests, 2,000 metres and that, and falling off the road machine at the end because you're so... You've basically mm. pulled for, you know, legs and arms for, like, full out. I mean, it's unbelievable. You'd only do it once. Right. You'll never... You'll get your best time and you'll probably never beat it because it's so hard. Well, I know, I know, I know. You're looking at me thinking, no, it's, this can't be the same guy. No, it, it gens, it, no. But, it, you know, but you're but, saying but all it, this. But who it. can we blame? ESPN having their gym closed. It was Frank LaBeouf that was on with us yesterday, by the way. Speaking of the gym, because he's still bragging about knowing Obama Yang's dad. Frank's still talking about with. when he was invited to Chelsea by Bruce Bock, <laughs> and the fans were singing, Frank. Frank LaBeouf and all that sort of nonsense. No, he wasn't talking about that yesterday, but he was the, the third one on Frank the panel. Frank was starting the songs. <laughs> but the people walking past him, they hadn't a clue who he was. They like, sing about me, I'm Frank LaBeouf. You can do what you like when you've won the World Cup. Anyway, thanks so much for sending in your questions. Uh, let's see if that, that World Cup. Again. He stole it from Lauren Blanc. Ah, oh, not very nice. That's what he did. Thanks for being with us. ESPNFC available seven days a week. Make sure you're always with us. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.